In 1972, Dr. Sarah Peterson watched as two million tires were dumped into the Atlantic Ocean off Florida's coast. The ambitious Osborne Reef Project promised to create the perfect artificial habitat for marine life. For years, the experiment exceeded all expectations as fish flourished and coral grew on the rubber structures. But when Hurricane Katrina struck in 2005, residents discovered something horrifying. The year was 1972. America was dealing with a massive problem that seemed impossible to solve. Mountains of old tires were piling up in landfills across the country. These rubber mountains were becoming breeding grounds for mosquitoes and fires that could burn for months. Something had to be done. Dr. Sarah Peterson, a respected marine biologist, believed she had found the perfect solution. She watched as her team prepared to launch what would become known as the Osborne Reef Project. The concept was brilliant in its simplicity. Take the millions of unwanted tires choking America's landfills and transform them into something beneficial for the environment. The tires would be bundled together with steel clips and weighted down with concrete. Then they would be carefully lowered to the ocean floor to create artificial reefs. Environmental groups were thrilled with the innovative approach. Here was a project that would solve two problems at once. The planning process had taken years of careful preparation. The operation was massive and meticulously organized. Volunteers from across Florida joined the effort, loading trucks with tires from collection centers. Boat after boat arrived at the designated location, each one loaded with hundreds of bundled tires. Cranes lifted the heavy bundles and lowered them into the crystal clear waters of the Atlantic. Dr. Peterson and her colleagues watched with satisfaction as their creation took shape below. The tires were arranged in neat formations across the seafloor, creating what they hoped would become a bustling underwater city for marine life. Television crews documented the historic moment, broadcasting images of the ambitious environmental project to millions of viewers nationwide. The first results were nothing short of spectacular. Within months, fish began arriving in droves. Schools of colorful tropical fish darted between the tire structures, treating them like underwater apartment buildings. Coral began growing on the rubber surfaces, transforming the black tires into vibrant underwater gardens. The sight was breathtaking. Diving expeditions to the reef became popular tourist attractions, with underwater photographers capturing stunning images of the thriving ecosystem. Local fishing communities noticed the difference immediately. Their catches improved dramatically as fish populations exploded around the tire reef. Charter boat captains began advertising trips to the famous artificial reef, and the area became a hot spot for sport fishing. Restaurants started featuring fresh catches from the tire reef on their menus. Fishing tournaments attracted participants from across the country, drawn by reports of record-breaking catches. The economic impact rippled through coastal communities as hotels, marinas, and equipment suppliers all benefited from increased business. Dr. Peterson found herself receiving awards and recognition from environmental organizations worldwide. She was invited to speak at conferences and universities about the revolutionary approach to conservation. The project was featured in scientific journals and environmental magazines as a model for innovative problem solving. International delegations visited the site to consider implementing similar projects in their own waters. The Osborne Reef became a symbol of American ingenuity and environmental leadership. The success seemed to prove that human ingenuity could solve environmental problems while creating new opportunities for nature to flourish. The Tyre Reef was generating millions of dollars in tourism revenue and supporting local fishing industries that had struggled for years. But nature had other plans. By the early 1980s, subtle changes began occurring beneath the waves. The steel clips holding the tire bundles together were not as durable as expected. Saltwater corrosion was slowly eating away at the metal fasteners. One by one, individual tires began breaking free from their carefully arranged formations. Underwater surveys revealed a disturbing pattern. The tires were not staying in their designated area as planned. Instead, they were migrating across the ocean floor, following current patterns that researchers had not fully understood. Some tires traveled for miles. As more tires broke loose, they began colliding with natural coral reefs that had taken decades to develop. The heavy rubber cylinders crushed delicate coral formations, destroying in minutes what nature had spent years creating. 
The very ecosystems the project was meant to protect were now under assault from the artificial structures meant to help them. Marine biologists documented the gradual exodus of sea life from the area. Fish that had once thrived around the tire structures began seeking shelter elsewhere. Diving instructors noticed fewer species during their expeditions. The vibrant underwater community that had attracted tourists from around the world was slowly disintegrating. The underwater paradise that had once attracted divers from around the world was slowly turning into an underwater wasteland. Environmental scientists began noticing disturbing changes in the water quality around the reef. The rubber was breaking down after years in salt water, releasing chemicals into the marine environment. What had once been hailed as an environmentally friendly solution was becoming a source of pollution, but the worst was yet to come. The years passed and hundreds of thousands of tires continued their destructive migration across the ocean floor. Natural reef systems that had existed for centuries were being systematically destroyed. Then came August 2005. Hurricane Katrina, one of the most powerful storms in recorded history, churned across the Gulf of Mexico with devastating force. The hurricane's underwater fury scattered the remaining tire bundles like toys. Currents that normally moved at gentle speeds suddenly became raging torrents capable of moving massive objects across vast distances. When residents of Broward County woke up the morning after Hurricane Katrina passed, they were confronted with a sight that would haunt them for years. Their pristine beaches, once famous for their white sand and crystal clear waters, were covered with thousands of old tires. The tires stretched along the coastline as far as the eye could see. Some were partially buried in sand, others sat exposed on the beach like giant black donuts. The smell was overwhelming and nauseating. 50 years of marine growth, decay, and chemical breakdown had transformed the rubber into toxic, foul-smelling obstacles. Hotels along the beach had to close their doors as guests fled from the stench. The tourism industry that had once celebrated the Tyre Reef now faced complete collapse. Fishing operations were suspended as boats could not navigate through the tire-littered waters near shore. Local authorities scrambled to organize cleanup efforts, but the scope of the disaster was staggering. Heavy machinery was brought in to remove the tires, but many were so deeply embedded in the sand that extraction seemed impossible. The cleanup would take months and cost millions of dollars. Environmental scientists who had once praised the Osborne Reef Project now faced the uncomfortable truth. Their innovative solution had become one of the worst man-made ecological disasters in United States waters. Dr. Peterson, now retired and watching the cleanup efforts from her home, could barely believe what her life's work had become. The project that had earned her international recognition was now synonymous with environmental catastrophe. Divers began the painstaking process of removing the remaining tires from the ocean floor. The task was enormous and dangerous. Each tire had to be individually located, freed from whatever marine growth had attached to it, and carefully brought to the surface. The process would take decades and cost tens of millions of dollars. The damage to natural coral reefs was irreversible. Ecosystems that had taken hundreds of years to develop had been destroyed by the wandering tires. Marine species that had once thrived in the area might never return. What had started as an innovative solution to America's tire disposal problem had become a costly lesson in environmental humility. The two million tires that were supposed to enhance marine life had instead created an underwater disaster that would take generations to fully address. The shocking truth was undeniable. What humans throw into the ocean doesn't simply disappear. It transforms. It moves, and eventually it finds its way back to haunt us in ways we never could have imagined. And you, do you think we've learned our lesson? Or are we still making the same mistakes with our environment today?